How are you? You know, pretty good, considering I haven't had to watch any of your crappy movies lately. Oh, thanks. You ever take a project just for the paycheck? I did. I had to. Right, right, because at least it led to those critically acclaimed roles, right? Yeah, it did. So, um, what's with all these books, anyway? You opening up, like, a Mork and Mindy home library or something here? Do you like books? Yeah, you know, I'm more of a movie guy, you know? Good for you. What do you think about it? Well, if you hold tight for a bit, I'll tell you. Because this is movie night. Hello and welcome to Movie Night, the only movie review show that can deliver a convincing Boston accent. I'm your host, Jonathan Paula. Tonight we'll be visiting the capital of Massachusetts to review some pictures set in and around Beantown. Let's begin with Goodwill Hunting. Released during Oscar season of 1997, this Gus Van Zandt drama film not only scored itself nine nominations, it also made $225 million against its modest $10 million budget. In the role that'd make him a household name, Matt Damon stars as the title character, a math prodigy who's wasting his life away living in South Boston and working as a janitor. The involved plot involves his quarrelsome relationship with his court-ordered therapist, dealing with his towny friend Ben Affleck, his budding romantic involvement with Minnie Driver, and studying under a renowned MIT professor. The infinitely versatile Robin Williams is positively brilliant as the psychiatrist, who challenges and battles Damon with long emotional soul-searching monologues in an Oscar-winning turn. Do you think I'd know the first thing about how hard your life has been? how you feel, who you are, because I read all of the twist. Does that encapsulate you? Personally, I don't give a shit about all that, because you know what? I can't learn anything from you. I can't read in some fucking book. Unless you want to talk about you, who you are, then I'm fascinated. I'm in. But you don't want to do that, do you, sport? Their adversarial contention begets a loving friendship and is the absolute bedrock of this 126-minute picture story. The original screenplay by Damon and Affleck famously won the two young boys from Boston an Academy Award, and rightly so. The dialogue and writing here is nearly unparalleled, one of the all-time best scripts, with Van Zandt doing a fantastic job bringing it all to life, framed by extremely lengthy close-ups and beautiful repetition and imagery. Perfectly paced, this movie flows effortlessly from one long sequence to the next, each one showcasing the magnificent acting talent of the tight-knit cast, and highlighting another dramatic moment from each of them, especially in an overwhelmingly powerful exchange where Williams repeatedly reassures Damon that his troubled past is not his fault. The R-rated movie is also wickedly funny, particularly if you're from the Boston area and can relate to the antics and camaraderie between Damon Affleck and their selfie buddies, like in a marvelous scene where they confront a Harvard student at a bar, hilariously schooling him in front of his potential female conquest, or when Affleck serves up sophisticated sounding malapropisms to trick an interviewing board into believing he's Will, the math genius. Danny Elfman's mellow score winds in and out of the picture beautifully, occasionally accompanied by some wonderful acoustic ballads from singer-songwriter Elliot Smith. Taken from afar, the overarching plot here rarely surprises, but the small moments littered throughout is what makes the experience so rewarding and powerful. An examination of trust, compassion, and finding your true purpose in life, this is a relatable and enjoyable film that resonates with me the more I watch and the older I get. Goodwill Hunting is a refreshingly emotional and uplifting experience. Now let's hear your thoughts from the YouTube comments. Our scores for Goodwill Hunting, a double nine. Although most held off on the top score, we agreed the acting and writing in this picture was phenomenal, with both of us rating this picture an awesome. For tonight's poll question, since this is a Boston episode, what's your favorite Boston-themed movie? Leave your response as a comment below. Next up tonight, Mystic River. Directed by Hollywood icon Clint Eastwood, this R-rated crime drama was nominated for six Oscars and managed to quintuple its $30 million budget after its October 2003 release. The 138-minute story follows the lives of three men from East Boston who reunite years after a childhood tragedy when one of them loses their daughter. Blending family drama, portraits of middle-class life in the city, and an intriguing murder mystery, this is a slow and deliberate picture that takes its time setting up all the pieces. The outstanding cast is anchored by a trio of tremendous performances from Sean Penn, Tim Robbins, and Kevin Bacon. In fact, this is the first picture since 1959's Ben-Hur to have both the lead and supporting actor win an Academy Award, for Penn and Robbins respectively. The two men play off each other so masterfully in incredibly focused scenes, they're often difficult to watch, especially when the two turn on each other in an accusatory fight. Still grieving, Penn poignantly remarks on his daughter's death, the death part you do alone, but I could have helped her with the dying. 
Other times, however, I found Penn's delivery to be a bit over the top and unrealistic. The actor even requested that an oxygen tank be available offset between his charged takes. Thankfully, the picture is flanked by much more nuanced and subtle performances from Laura Linney, Lawrence Fishburne, Emmy Rosam, and Marsha Gay Harden. You think I killed Katie? Celeste. That's the kind of sense we're making these days. Where'd you come up with that? You barely looked at me since you found out Katie was dead. In fact, you seem repulsed by me. Dave! What? I don't think anything. I'm confused, okay? Even your friend Sean asked about- He's not my friend in case you haven't figured that out yet. He asked me about you. What time you came home? What'd you tell him? I said I was asleep. That's good thinking. Eastwood's static and purposeful framing of each drawn-out scene allows for this all-star cast to truly shine. And indeed, it's the dialogue and performances that really propel the narrative, based on Dennis Lehane's novel of the same name. A compelling look at human nature, evil habits, and tragic what-if scenarios. The seriousness of each scene is underscored by a droning and minimalist score from Eastwood himself. For those looking for an uncomfortable and brooding drama with top-caliber acting, you could do worse than re-watching this film a couple times. Opening with an intriguing prologue, but still rife with missteps, missed opportunities, and plot deficiencies, Mystic River is a melodramatic mystery with exaggerated characters. I'll score this a 7. Although impressive on an initial viewing, after further examination, there's simply not much here beyond a violent and troubled exterior. I thought it was cool. Early this week, I shared my thoughts on the highly anticipated The Fault in Our Stars trailer, which you can watch now over at the Movie Night Archive channel. And when you're there, make sure to subscribe for other trailer commentaries and an organized collection of every review I've produced. Finally tonight, let's discuss The Town. A taut crime thriller from actor-director Ben Affleck, this 124-minute feature managed to earn four times its $37 million budget when it was released in September of 2010. Affleck and Jeremy Renner star as bank robbers from Charleston, Massachusetts, who were introduced to by way of a carefully planned and well-executed heist in a very entertaining and thrilling opening sequence. Ben feels right at home, both literally and figuratively, and does a great job on both sides of the camera. Meanwhile, Renner's overly combative persona scored him an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor. As FBI agent John Hamm attempts to track down the culprits, Affleck accidentally falls in love with Rebecca Hall, one of the robbery victims, who is often portrayed as weak and gullible, while Renner gets anxious looking for their next big score. The exquisitely beautiful Blake Lively as a smaller role as an ex-girlfriend, but shows a surprising amount of dramatic depth with her character. Although some of the developments are a bit too neat and convenient, a fair amount of the dialogue is authentically Boston. Containing a number of violent shootout scenes, the action in this film is tense and hectic, culminating with a harrowing standoff inside the bowels of Fenway Park. Steadfast on avoiding prison time, ex-con Renner stoically warns before the final job, if we get jammed up, we're holding court on the street. Affleck's use of strong depth of field and long shots, coupled with handheld sequences in other areas, manages to feel appropriate in each environment. In progress. We're calling out! Get out here, asshole. I got your friend. All right, calm down. Put your gun away, all right? You're gonna get hurt. Put that fing gun down now! I got you, motherfucker. Truck. Functioning almost like an R-rated love letter to Boston's criminal underworld, this film doesn't quite glamorize the immoral actions of its protagonists, but successfully convinces you they're at least worth rooting for. Seldom used, the score from Harry Gregson Williams and David Buckley is a martyred and subtle one, adding just enough noise and bass to the already tense atmosphere. Although the pacing is a bit clunkier in the extended DVD version, this is an otherwise quick film with lots of great action sequences, perfectly spaced out at the beginning, middle, and end of the film. Focusing on themes of defiance, betrayal, and starting over, this isn't a award-winning art, but it's a capable thriller that folks from Boston will definitely enjoy over and over again. The Town. Gritty and exciting, but hardly ambitious. Here are some of your reviews from the YouTube comments. An 8 and a 7 for The Town. Although the originality of the plot was criticized by many, you enjoyed the action and performances, rating this a great. A fun, quasi-emotional picture if you're not too critical. I thought this was a cool movie. Finally tonight, let's read reviews for films currently playing in theaters, or some of your tweet critiques. If you see a new movie in theaters, tweet your review at the JPMN hashtag. The Winter Olympics kick off next week in Sochi, Russia, and to commemorate the occasion, we'll be watching some of the only movies that even have a cursory connection to them. 
Downhill Racer, a 1969 drama starring Robert Redford, the 1993 comedy Cool Runnings with John Candy, and Blades of Glory, starring John Heater and Will Ferrell. Once you've seen these films, share your opinions by voting in the polls below or by leaving a comment review. If you'd like to watch more Movie Night reviews, check out the related videos on the right, or click subscribe to be notified of all new content. And be sure to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or Google Plus for updates between episodes. Once again, my name is Jonathan Paula. Thank you for watching and listening. Until next time, have a good movie night.